I've completed work on this JX3P. It really just needed um, some cleaning of the keybed. Uh, some contacts were not working for a few keys. Uh, I took it all apart though, cleaned all the contacts, cleaned all the keys for that matter. And now, check it out. This is some custom programming I was doing. So there's no arpeggiator on this synth, but you can still get creative and do things like this. So, hey, arpeggiator, no problem. Nice fat sound, dual oscillator. Resonant filter. Kind of really like the random LFO on this song. Anyway, this thing is perfect now. <laughs> These are the programming instructions, by the way. It tells you what buttons to push to control which features. It's not too hard. A lot of people use a programmer, but it's not real hard to edit. The programmer, I think, lets you uh, manipulate things in real time a little easier, though. I have four keys that don't play on this JX3P, so I've got to get into them and uh, take a look. I believe it's the contact strip underneath the keys. What I don't know is how long is the contact strip, and does the contact strip, you know, is it just a, a few, uh, you know, like a dozen keys or so at a time for you know each each strip right so this white key I've got a bad white key here you also don't want to lose the springs I'm trying to lift it right now oh, there we go um, I used a flathead screwdriver a little tiny one to lift from where it is attached to this metal bar along the back side of the keys to lift the spring out. Now the key should, there we go, so I pulled it slightly forward and rocked it down and now then you rock it back because there's a couple different uh, places it appears to be um, latched in. This metal strip goes across the front of the keyboard here, right? was actually blocking the key from coming out and it was so there's the key here is a dirty key bed as expected and there is my guy so if you've never cleaned one of these before it's really straightforward it's your swab. And you lift up the little rubber piece and you clean the switch underneath it. 
I call it a switch. It's not mechanical per se. Um, what you've got underneath this is two sets of interlocking contacts and this little black part there which is pushed down when you press the key down makes a complete circuit across those interlocking contacts firing the key. So I'm going to clean the black part. I'm going to just wiped off the contacts themselves. I'm going to take a closer look at them uh, in just a second. But um, we'll, we'll be trying this out momentarily. I would have thought that I'd have something. So let's do a little more investigation. Okay, so here's what I want you to see. Two things. One, I got out an eraser and cleaned the contacts and they just immediately started turning black like that. So I cleaned them, a couple of them, and uh, hit them with alcohol again. And just want to show you this little trick here. So what do I have here? I have, I've got a, a basically a jumper wire here, right? So I keep touching the one next to it. <laughs> it's not the key I'm supposed to be touching. So anyway, there's the contact. It looks like a flat, flathead screw, which is interesting. I was expecting a little interlocking S's. That's my key. So the key circuitry works, okay? So that is shorting the key. So now, if I put this back on, that works too. All of these keys are now suspect or will go at some time and because I'm a nice guy I'm going to disassemble the entire key bed clean everything clean all the contacts wipe down all the keys and get the dust out of it and all that so that uh, future problems with the um, oxidation of the contacts which is that black stuff that we're seeing will not occur Again, for a long, 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 long time on this JX3P. So it's going to be in great shape when I'm done with it. Now here's something to pay attention to on, the, on this Roland JX3P. When you're removing the key contact strips, notice how different they are. We have the little, the little nipple here and then the big nipple with a much larger hole in the circuit board. So, some uh, since of the same era, like a, a Casio, there are no nipples at all. So the, the strip literally just lays on the circuit board and you can just lift it right off. If you try to just lift this one right off, you will tear it. So you have to exercise care removing um, and care holding the camera. You have to exercise care removing these so that you don't tear the strips otherwise you might have to get a new one so just be advised and then when you're putting them back in just be patient you got to get them lined up right over the hole you'll never see it since you can't see through it but you got to get it lined up right over the hole there we go and right in okay and then you push down there's actually this it this part is rather hard um, it's not as soft and bendable as the rest of it, so it actually goes into the hole well. So I have cleaned the contacts. I have gone over them then with this fine eraser, getting more oxidation off them. And uh, now just a quick test before I reassemble. So this is one of the bad ones. I've marked it. And here's another one of the bad ones. So, everything's good. I, I've actually, of course, just run down the entire uh, scale. Made sure everything works before I do the reassembly. Because um, that's no fun. I have to take things apart again. So, now I will put it all back together. 